What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks. Today the Kanto Cup drops in Go Battle League. So I wanted to bring you one more video showcasing um, a couple different team comps that I tried out in some practice battles here and give you an idea of, again, what Pokemon you're going to be seeing a lot of in this Kanto Cup. So Kanto Cup, um, <laughs> kind of ironically is going to be dominated by a lot of these Alolan Pokemon. So Alolan Muk, Alolan Marowak, um, those are going to be two very, very common Pokemon within this meta. Hypno is going to be very, very common as well. And Alolan Muk is really kind of a core breaker of this like Hypno AWAC core. Um, Alola Muk has a lot of favorable matchups against that. Mew is also kind of another core breaker, and Alolan Muk has very favorable matchups against Mew as well. But um, Alolan Raichu, you might see some of those. Um, Alolan Sand Slash used to be rated very highly on the ratings list, but um, I don't know if it's going to have that much play because you are walled by Alolan Marowak. And again, this is going to be a very like psychic, ghost, and dark heavy meta in the Kanto Cup. Lots of Hypno, and so kind of being able to work your way around that, um, try to find some Pokemon that maybe can beat uh, beat down on some of those Pokemon with enough neutral damage or actually hit for super effective. And I uh, personally, I still feel like Alolan Muk is gonna be probably the best Pokemon within the Kanto Cup, just because it's so flexible. You can really run it anywhere. I think it's a very safe lead and I think it functions very, very well as a safe swap. I'm running a Blastoise here because it's also surprisingly rated pretty high on PV Poke, running Water Gun, Hydro Cannon, and I'm actually running Skull Bash on mine. I really don't feel like there's any need for Ice Beam on Blastoise. Um, if you're stuck against a Grass type, uh, that's just unfortunate, but um, you want to try to wiggle your way out of that matchup um, like I was able to do there. My Blastoise was stuck against the Venusaur, and so I use my Alolan Muk as the safe swap here. My opponent brings in Moltres, which is kind of a wild wild pick. Um, I don't know if you're going to be seeing any Moltres out there. Moltres is extremely glassy in the Great League. Ridiculously glassy. Um, so you can see Dark Pulse just totally shreds it there. And then my opponent also has an Articuno in the back. So they must be a big fan of these Kanto birds. Uh, you can see how much damage um, Dark Pulse does on Articuno there. Articuno has a little bit more bulk than like Zapdos and Moltres in Great League, but still not that bulky. So um, I wouldn't personally recommend running any of the, the Kanto Legendary Birds in this cup. Uh, they're also running a Razor Leaf Venusaur. You're typically gonna want Vine Whip as the fast move there for much better energy generation. I have Haunter in the back. Um, if you're running Gengar or Haunter, I would still personally recommend that you run Shadow Punch and Sludge Bomb to provide you with coverage against the Wigglytuffs, which Wigglytuff is a powerhouse in this meta as well, something you really need to look out for. So this matchup, Alolan Marowak against Hymp Hypno is not as favorable for Alolan Marowak as you might think, uh, especially Shadow Hypno because the Confusions are doing so much damage. I know this is most likely just going to be an Elemental Punch, but I still have to shield this up because it's going to do a lot of damage. So I actually use my Wigglytuff as a safe swap, and my opponent brings in Sea King. This is a Legacy Sea King running Poison Jab, so it is hitting Wigglytuff for super effective damage. Kind of an interesting response to a Charmer, but as you can see, Sea King is not resisting these charms, so it's actually kind of struggling to outpace Wigglytuff there, and I'm actually even able to uh, win that matchup anyways. This... Uh, this team I'm running here, Alolan Marowak and then Double Charm in the back, is something that I am very scared of. I am very scared that people might um, start running a Double Charmer strat in this Kanto Cup because so many people love this like fast move beatdown strat for some reason. Uh, we saw it a lot with like Bastiodon and, and Shadow Raise Reliefers. And uh, in this Kanto Cup, there's not a whole lot of like hard punishes two charmers um, you have Golbat, which is a good response you have tentacruel but i don't think tentacruel is going to see that much play um, because there's no azumarill in the meta so even like alolan marowak against wigglytuff is not that great um 
and then like Alolan Muck against the Charmers really isn't that great either because they can just two shield and charm you down. So I really, I don't want this double charm team to pick up any attraction there. You saw me lose with it, folks. Don't run double charm. I mean, you can run whatever you want, but um, a charm, charm might be very, very strong in this meta. So I am a little bit concerned about that. Make sure you account for that when you're building your line of three. Do you have enough response to a charmer. So here's a Lowland Sand Slash. I actually led with Zapdos here. I think Zapdos really has a decent amount of play. It's rated like um, 20th overall or something like that for this Kanto Cup. So actually a decently high rating for Zapdos. You do need the Legacy Fast Move Thundershock there. And then uh, I run it with Thunderbolt and Drill Peck. Mew, as we know, very solid core breaker. My opponent brings out a Shadow Hitmonchan, most likely running Thunder Punch and Ice Punch, I would imagine. Um, Shadow Hitmonchan is going to struggle against the Alolan Marowak here, but we can kind of see how much damage these uh, Shadow Thunder Punches do. I'm just absorbing all this damage. Uh, I want minimal health to be farmed and I want maximum energy coming out of this matchup. And I would prefer to save my shield for my Zapdos. My opponent brings out their own Alolan Marowak. And I'm gonna have enough energy to uh, get to two Shadow Bones, but I actually instantly swap into my Zapdos there because I wanted to get a jump start on energy. I do have to shield this Ice Punch. It would hit Zapdos for super effective damage. I over farm a little bit more and now I'm going to throw this drill pack even though it's resisted it will be able to take out that Alolan Sand Slash. Alolan Sand Slash is like kind of uh, gets destroyed by Alolan Marowak because those double super effective fire spins just really chunk it. It does have access to Bulldoze for some coverage but Bulldoze is a terrible move and you don't get stab on it so. Okay Polyrath. Uh, my opponent is running Bubble Polyrath. I still personally would prefer Mudshot Polyrath just for um, the extreme energy generation there. You saw me leading with Alolan Golem. Both Alolan Golem and Alolan Graveler are going to have some play against those water ice types. Um, but Alolan Golem especially is very glassy. Alolan uh, Graveler has a little bit more bulk to it. But I'm still not fully convinced that these Pokemon are going to have like a super solid place in the metal. We're, we're, we'll have to see how it uh, works out. You do have some rock moves to threaten the Alolan Marowak as well. But you're going to be taking double super effective damage from the Bone Club, which is not good at all. So because I store this energy on my Alolan Golem, I'm going to be able to throw this Wild Charge and it actually takes out the Alolan Raichu there. Outcomes Golbat. This is obviously a very, very positive for Golem. I'm just going to throw the Wild Charge right away, and it actually takes out the Golbat from that health. Wow, good game there. Haunter. I really want to make Haunter and Gengar work, but it is tough in a meta where Alolan Muck and Hypno are going to be everywhere. Um, Gengar and Haunter both have a lot of play against like Alolan Marowak because you can just cleanly outpace it. And they have a lot of neutral matchups across the board as well. Again, I do recommend that you run Sludge Bomb as the secondary move there. So you're not walled by the normal types like Snorlax and especially Wigglytuff. You can get a nice one shot uh, with Sludge Bomb on uh, a Charmer there. So my Alolan Muck is stuck against this Polyrath, which is not good at all. Polyrath is a very good response to both an Alolan Muck safe swap or a Snorlax safe swap. Keeping a fighter in the back might kind of be um, an interesting strategy for this cup because I feel like a lot of people are going to be using either Alolan Muck or Snorlax as safe swaps. And I have tried Polyrath in the back running like Dynamic Punch and Hydro Pump. Kind of a nice surprise. Here you see Electrode. Electrode gets access to Volt Switch as the fast move and then Discharge and Foul Play as the charge move. So Foul Play is going to be able to hit for super effective damage on the Ghost and the Psychic types. Really good there and you're not taking like super effective damage from any of that. Um, obviously from Alola Marowak, the Bone Club will hit for super effective but um, the Discharge is also going to hit for super effective on those water types. So that's going to... Electrode might be kind of an interesting core breaker. Obviously, you don't get stab on um, the foul play. But still nice chip damage. 
And definitely an interesting Pokemon that most people might not know what moveset Electrode has. So Gengar into Shadow Machamp. This is favorable for me. Um, however, obviously the Rock Slide would really, really hurt. But you can see how much damage the Shadow Claws are doing there. Uh, very stupid of me to throw energy onto this Alolan Muck. I really should have saved this energy. And just brought in my Lapras right away anyways. So at this point, I really need to come out of this with some stored energy that I can threaten that Machamp. But that was a, a pretty bad play on my part. Uh, we get some nice lag there, which is always great. I felt like this was going to be a Dark Pulse. Because I have Wigglytuff in the back, I am not as concerned about Switch Advantage here. So even though I lose Switch Advantage, that's okay. I'm going to be able to bring in Wigglytuff, and I know that my opponent's not going to have enough energy to get to a Sludge Wave. I'm actually able to charm them down before they can even get to a move, which is good. They bring out a Lolan Marowak, and as you can see, like these charms are really chunking, even though they're resisted. Alolan Marowak has to go for Bone Clubs here because any of the ghost type moves are gonna be double resisted. This is one of the reasons that Wigglytuff is gonna be so powerful in this meta. Out comes the Machamp. I'm gonna throw some Shadow Punches on it with my Gengar, but I do have a lot of energy stored. I get the shield there. I have to shield this even though I know it's for sure a cross chop and it would be triple resisted, but I need to guarantee that I can get this Shadow Punch off with my Gengar. So down goes the Machamp, out comes the Marowak, and I'm gonna be able to get to this Shadow Punch to take it out there. Good game, Shadow Machamp, definitely an interesting pick, but man, you gotta watch out for the Hypnos and the Muse against the Lowland Marowak because you have that Rock Slide, it's actually not that bad of a matchup. This is a terrible matchup for me. I, I'm trying Beedrill out here. I wanna see how much damage this X Scissor is going to do to this Shadow Dragonite. It actually does a decent chunk. There is a, a case to be made that I possibly could have stayed in that matchup and just gone straight X Scissor. It would have had to shield, but my Poison Jabs were still outputting some decent damage against that Shadow Dragonite. I'm going to attempt to burn some shields here. So the Sludge Wave does get shielded up, unfortunately. And then uh, I'm gonna throw this another sludge wave here, but Shadow Machamp with loaded energy is very dangerous. Beedrill is going uh, to not appreciate the rock slide, but I have to bring in Beedrill here. I know I can at least get to this X Scissor before he gets to another rock slide. There's the Dragonite. He saved the Dragon Claw, which was a very smart move. I'm gonna bring in my Mew and Shadow Claw this thing down. I know the Machamp still has some residual energy. Uh, it's a lowland mark in the back, so this is definitely a hard loss here. Double Surf uh, would not be enough, I don't think. Yeah, I really don't think Double Surf would have been enough, and my opponent gets to a Dark Pulse here anyway, so uh, this is pretty much a good game. Even though I could like drill run this here, I, I don't have enough health to take out that Machamp. Very good game there. Shadow Dragonite, pretty interesting. You obviously need to look out for Lapras and the Charmers. This is a, a good lead for Mew. I prefer Surf and Wild Charge on my on my Mew, uh, just because Surf is able to get faster damage against a Lolan Marowak. I know that Rock Slide and Wild Charge are the current recommended move set on PB Poke. Rock Slide does give you more coverage in this cup because you're able to hit the Flyers for super effective as well as a Lola Marowak, but I kind of prefer the faster damage output of um, Surf. We'll just have to see how the meta shakes up there. I'm able to take out the Wigglytuff. I have a Zapdos in the back there. Out comes the Alolan Marowak. I could have possibly baited, but I just go straight for the Shadow Bone. And then right here, not able to get to another move. So I guess going straight for the nuke there was smart. I have to respect all this energy. My opponent just goes for a Bone Club. And then I knew that there's no way they had enough energy to throw Bone Club and Shadow Bone. So I just let that Bone Club go through. Going to throw Surf here. Mew would win the CMP tie against the Alolan Marowak, I'm pretty sure. They are farming up a lot, so I'm just going to throw this Surf and take out this Alolan Marowak. I think my opponent lost track of my energy. I'm going to insta-swap my Zapdos. It's a Haunter in the back, so all I got to do is get to this Thunderbolt, and this will be able to take out the Haunter for sure. It is a shiny Zapdos as well, so kind of a nice little flex there. And this Thunderbolt definitely takes out a Haunter. Good game. 
Hunter is so glassy, you really need some shields. Zapdos against Alolan Muck. Fairly neutral matchup here, but um, unfortunately my Zapdos really kind of has to commit the shields first. Because I know this is only a Dark Pulse, but it's going to do so much damage. I am just going to go straight for the Thunderbolt and see what happens here. My opponent also shields, so not great for me. Going to switch into my own Alolan Muck to Mirror. And it, uh, there's no immediate punish to this Alolan Muck, which is great. My opponent still has a lot of stored energy. Out comes Lapras. I'm just going to go straight for the Sludge Wave because I have this big energy advantage here. It does connect, which is good for me. And then uh, at this point, I'm really hoping that I live this Surf barely, but I don't. Uh, I actually prefer that my opponent has this much health because this is going to be really good farm for my Venusaur. And I'm not too concerned about the Surf. It's unlikely that this Lapras is running Ice Beam. And so I know that I'm going to get uh, some really nice farm down on this Lapras. Ooh, it's a Hypno in the back, which is not good for me. There's also that Alolan Muck in the back still that has a lot of stored energy. I'm going to throw this Frenzy Plant, and I need to switch immediately so this Confusion Damage does not get registered onto my Venusaur. My Zapdos absorbs it. I'm going to go for the Drill Peck Bait here. But as you can see, it fails. That feels terrible. If I would have gone for the Thunderbolt, it would have immediately taken that thing out. This is going to be a very, very close game here. This Drill Peck obviously gets shielded. And I have to shield this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to this next Drill Peck. My opponent has too much stored energy. I have to bring in my Venusaur and Vine Whip this thing down. Because that Confusion did not register on my Venusaur, I'm able to barely Vine Whip it down and take that game. Very good game, very close game. All right, this is kind of a meme team. Mr. Mime, Mr. Mime has access to Confusion, uh, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. So Shadow Ball is gonna offer you really good coverage against the opposing Psychic types. But Mr. Mime is so glassy. This is definitely just kind of a meme pick I was trying out. My opponent goes, goes for Bulldoze. In comes the Hypno. And I'm just going straight for the Shadow Ball, see what happens. Oh my gosh, the Shadow Ball connects. It does a lot of damage there. Um, I'm staying in with the Mr. Mom. I'm going to be able to get to another Shadow Ball here. I'm assuming my opponent is going to shield this because they want to farm. Okay, they let it go. Mr. Mom putting in some work. Let's go. Out comes the Sand Slash. Luckily, uh, my Nine Tails is going to be able to shred this thing with Fire Spin. Double super effective. If this is a Bulldoze, it doesn't really matter. It's not that strong of a move. Does some nice chip damage there. Uh, in the back is a Lowland Muck. And even though my opponent is up two shields, um, I'm still in a pretty good spot here. Beedrill can comfortably tank one Dark Pulse. Um, and they even go for Sludge Wave. You definitely want to go for Dark Pulse there. Um, gonna throw this X Scissor here. My opponent has two shields, so there's no point in going straight for the Drill Run here. Um, even if they let this through, that's I'm still in a good spot. I just kind of want to put it in Psy Shock range. And so I will shield this up and then just go straight for the X Scissor again. Maybe they're single moved, uh, but Dark Pulse is definitely the way that you want to go there. And then uh, I get the last shield. I immediately switch into my Nine Tails. Going to be able to Psy Shock this thing down and then Fire Spin down the Alolan Sand Slash. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciate the content. And best of luck with your Kanto battles today.